Okay, we're all planted. Uh, if only the seeds could magically grow overnight, my problems would be solved. <laughs> Maybe Elf George could help. He needed to count how many carrot seeds were planted. And then he had to get the same amount of carrots from his refrigerator. George wondered if the chef would be as happy as a cobbler this time. Well, I'm going up to water the garden. Netty, I think we should close the restaurant until the fresh veggies grow. Oh uh, no! We can buy some from the store! Ah, uh, but they won't taste biscotti fresh. It's impossible, Chef. Carrots can't grow from seeds overnight. I told you. But they did. And I need to know how it happened so I can make it happen again. So, could you study my dirt? I'll give you a free pizza. Okay, I'll run tests. Uh, can I keep the carrot? Nope, sorry. I'm making soup. Oh, Jojo! Hey, look at the carrots we planted. Already grown, huh? <laughs> you know, as long as I have my fresh veggies, I won't have to close down. <laughs> George felt like he'd made a good elf. But I wonder why the eggplants and squash did not grow. Oh, he'd forgotten the eggplants and squash. Later, I'm gonna plant those. If it works again, tomorrow we'll have peas and arugula. <laughs> Eggplant, squash, but where were peas and arugula? How could George be an elf without fresh vegetables? <laughs> Hello, Professor Wiseman. Our dirt is just normal dirt. No, I, I don't know yet if it happened again. <gasps> oh, and Ned, it's happened again. We got eggplant, we got the squash, come and see. <laughs> squash, eggplant, I'm coming right over. Don't make soup. Einstein, pizza. Meet me at Piscetti's, stat. Are you buying? We're not eating, we're being scientists. Uh, George, did you um, do something which I don't know what it would possibly be with all of our vegetables? <laughs> You're feeding a vegetarian cobbler? <laughs> Did you plant a can of peas? <gasps> They're growing in cans now? Natty, call the TV news! <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, hi, everybody. <laughs> I, well, um, this would be mine. You see, <clears throat> George, um... <clears throat> wanted wanted to be your elf. <laughs> oh, you did this, so my garden would grow fast. Uh -huh. Oh, Nettie, our garden is not magic. Ah, but your cooking still is. Well, you got me there. That's right. I'm great. I'm gonna cook all these veggies up as lunch for everybody. Come on! I'm hungry! 
The man with the yellow hat's hat was special. But what made it so special? George, come on, it's time to go. When I put my hat on, I'm all ready to head out the door. What? Huh? What? <laughs> okay. George, that was funny, but you know the rule. No one is allowed to play with the yellow hat. George sure liked that yellow hat. <laughs> George's cap just wasn't special. I'd like to return these. They were yellow, but after only one washing, they turned saffron. I have to make a big speech, and I need to know my shorts are yellow. Like a hat of your own, George? <laughs> well, which hat do you like? George wanted a big yellow hat, but there was only one of those in the world. Well, you could try different hats till you find what feels right for you. Ah. <laughs> so George began his quest for headgear. Hey, where's George today? <laughs> Didn't recognize ya. That's not a city kid hat. Some hats are right for some people and some aren't. <laughs> George's friends didn't appreciate any of his headgear. Picking the right headgear was not easy. What made the yellow hat so great? <laughs> it was just plain fun. George, I need to wear the hat for an important speech at the museum. Please don't play with it. <gasps> That's what George wanted. A fun hat that he could play with. <laughs> George wanted his fun hat to be more than just a normal hat. He'd use his cap for shape. He would need an opening. Because that would be his ice cream dispenser. But it wasn't fun when it froze the top of his head and then melted and leaked. To solve these problems, George used heavy poster board and raisins instead of ice cream for a fun, healthy snack and a hat. Spring had arrived. It was the perfect day for George to break his moon ball record. George! 
Time to come in. Aww. Come on. Bedtime. <laughs> oh, I get it. You think because the sun is out, you should be out. <laughs> well, George, in the winter, the days are short, so it's dark at dinner time and dark at bedtime. But now it's spring, so the days are longer. It's light when you eat dinner and light when you go to bed. <laughs> well, 7.30 means bedtime no matter how light it is outside, George. I know. <laughs> it was hard to fall asleep with the sun out. <laughs> Counting sheep seemed like a good idea. But even the sheep were out enjoying the sunshine. It just wasn't fair to make a monkey go to bed and miss all this. George didn't fall asleep until the sun went down. There we go. Good morning, George. I put new batteries in the clock, so now I'm setting the time. Look, I can move the time forward like this. Or backward like this. <laughs> See, the little hand points to the hour, eight, And the big hand tells you how long until the next hour. Eight thirty, halfway to nine o'clock. So while my bedroom clock and watch are in the shop, Olga will make sure we're on time for things like going to bed. You know, I'd like to get a surprise for George. He's been really good about sticking to his bedtime. Hmm. Hey, what about a blimp ride? The Rough Week blimp is in town this week, and I know the owner. Oh, George would love a blimp ride. <laughs> well, good. Mr. Rough Week will be here tomorrow at 9.30. You can make an appointment with him. But be on time. Mr. Rough Week keeps a tight schedule. <laughs> George, it's bedtime. I'm sorry, George, it's 7.30. If it were 6.30, you could keep playing, but it's not. 6.30? George just learned how to change time this morning. Well, your bed is all ready for you. <laughs> oh, it's only... Huh, I thought... Oh, sorry, I guess you still have an hour to play. <laughs> oh, <laughs> can't be late. Mm. Well, they were out of jelly donuts, so I got chocolate. You're late. I, I the, I, 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 that's not possible. I... Bedtime in the city, when all little monkeys like to hear a good story. Of all the bedtime stories, Double O Doggy was George's favorite. 
It's a super spy's job to discover secrets, and Double O Doggy is the best. <laughs> he has lots of tools to help him. <laughs> oh, that's a periscope, remember? <laughs> well, inside the tube are two mirrors. The mirror at this end reflects whatever it's pointing at to a mirror at this end. That way, Double O Doggy can see things without being seen himself. <laughs> All right, good night, little spy monkey. <laughs> the next day, George started practicing to be a super spy like Double O Doggy. George, if you have any paper to recycle, put it in this bin, okay? Um, George? <laughs> a super spy needed a spy name. George became... Ah. Double O Monkey. Ooh. Professor Wiseman, I was wondering... Can we meet an hour later? A super spy had to be smart, quiet, and quick with his hands and feet. There's this thing I want to get for George. He is going to love it. <gasps> Sometimes super spies had to go undercover. Oh, great. See you then. He'd only been a super spy for two minutes, and Double O Monkey already had his first spy mission. Find out what the man with the yellow hat was going to get him. But he had to make sure he wouldn't be seen. Staying out of sight was complicated. Hi, how you doing? What? George? Hmm. No. Huh? Even puddles could give you away. Do you have this in stock? A barking charkey was even worse than a puddle. The last thing a spy wants is to attract attention. That sounds like charkey. She must have escaped again. Obviously, not every dog was a good spy like Double O Doggy. I got it! Well, we found Charky! <laughs> Sorry, we'll help clean that up. No, it's all right. Just take Charky home. Thanks. Okay, bye! Hmm, let's see now. It should be here somewhere. <gasps> George? Benji and Willie were George's favorite mice in the entire world. <laughs> and 
Bruno was the only gopher snake he knew personally. So when Mr. Zubel asked him to pet sit for a day, George was thrilled. Thanks for helping me on such short notice, George. I have to be at the zoo morning till night, studying feet for my new mural, Rhino What You Did Last Summer. Now, Bruno has already eaten an egg, so he won't be hungry anymore today. Don't feed him. <laughs> the mice must be fed, but I'm out of food. So, I told the pet shop you'd be coming by to pick up mouse food. <laughs> George was determined to be the best pet sitter ever. So he sat. See you tonight. Thanks again. <laughs> George, I have to go talk to the park director about Heritage Week. Will you be okay by yourself? <laughs> be a good little monkey pet sitter. <laughs> a good sitter makes his city feel at home. Since these guys lived together, they were probably used to being closer together. They didn't seem happy about that. <laughs> of course they weren't happy. They were hungry. Time to get food. <laughs> Here you go. One bag of mouse treats for Benji and Willie Zuwell. <laughs> Excuse me. Would I have to feed a snake long, skinny food? No. Snakes eat fish, insects, spiders, mice. <gasps> yeah, mice, earthworms, slugs, eggs. And they only eat once a week, sometimes once a month. <gasps> no wonder Benji and Willie didn't want to be near Bruno. <laughs> you forgot your mouse food. Hola. Zubel here. I didn't tell George that Bruno is about to shed his skin. He only sheds three times a year. So watch for it. It's worth seeing. Sorry. I'm out of peanuts. <laughs> George reassured the mice that they were safe the whole time. When he went to make sure Bruno liked his new spot by the window, <gasps> he noticed Bruno had changed. What happened to him? The pet shop owner knew all about snakes. George could bring Bruno and ask him. Like any snake, when Bruno saw that warm sun, he wanted to be in it. The sun was warm, but city life was too noisy for a snake. He wanted to find somewhere quiet. <laughs> Came back for this? <laughs> ah, I see Bruno shed his skin. Mr. Zubo was waiting for it. As a snake grows up, it wriggles out of its old skin. Did you think this was Bruno? <laughs> I'll bet Bruno is under his rock. That's where he always goes after he sheds. George was relieved to hear Bruno would be safe in his animal habitat. Until he remembered he left the habitat open. <gasps> Bruno must have crawled out. <laughs> 